What is he doing, you may be asking yourself. Well, let's explain. This is a microphone. This is a pair of headphones. This is a speaker. This is a pair of microphones. Confused? Let's explain. Hello, Mark here from Present Day Production and welcome to another video on the very basics of recording. This is a little video series where we strip things right back down to basic knowledge for those of you who are just starting out in audio and maybe some people who've been doing it a while but, you know, could hopefully learn something. Who knows, I learn something every day and I've been doing it about 140 years now. That's how old I feel anyway. So going back to the beginning of the video, you may have wondered what James was doing listening to music through two microphones. Well, a microphone is basically a device that captures sound and a speaker is a device that replays sound. But physically, they're basically the same. They're obviously one's better at one thing than the other. This is better at being a microphone than it is a speaker and a speaker is generally better at being a speaker than it is a microphone. But the principles on how they work are basically the same. So if we take the grill off of this, remove the basket, under that piece of foam, there's a capsule, and that capsule vibrates when it senses changes in air pressure. And if I talk into it, that's a change in air pressure. That will cause the diaphragm to vibrate. There's then a moving coil inside and a magnet assembly, and the coil moves up and down the outside of the magnet, and that creates a very tiny electrical current that comes out the back of a microphone and is then amplified by the mic preamp. When we play music back through a speaker, exactly the same thing happens, but in reverse. So that electrical signal, which has now been amplified in the case of a speaker, sometimes thousands of times, that goes through the amplifier, the voltage comes out the back, goes into the speaker, the speaker vibrates. Again, there's a magnet assembly, there's a moving coil assembly, and there's the cone, which is the same as the diaphragm. The speaker then vibrates, that creates changes in air pressure, and that hits our ears, and then our brain interprets that as audio. That's basically how it works. So this is a microphone, but it's also a speaker. This is a pair of headphones, but can also be used as a microphone. And to prove that point, let's just have a little listen now. So I'm just gonna talk into these headphones. So these headphones are currently plugged into one of the mic preamps on the desk. Um, and I'm gonna talk into the headphones and hopefully you'll hear my voice. That's if I've set this up correctly. So I'm talking into the headphones now instead of the lav mic that I'm wearing. And hopefully you can hear my voice nice and clear. So this is a great example of a pair of headphones being used as a microphone. So conversely, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Let's play some music. Let's just play a little bit of acoustic guitar that we were working on earlier. So I've got some acoustic guitar playing back now, and I've plugged this microphone into the headphone socket on our interface. So the audio that we recorded earlier, I can hear clear as it actually it sounds quite good for a, for a microphone. This is now playing back through this microphone. If I hold this up to the mic I'm wearing, you'll hear it. So there we go, they're interchangeable. So I'm wearing a tiny lav mic to do this video. I could, if I wanted to, plug that into my phone and use it as an earbud. Uh, conversely, I could get a pair of earbuds and I could plug them into a microphone input and clip one on my shirt and use it as a microphone. So the point we're trying to get across here is that a microphone and a speaker are basically exactly the same thing. They're just at opposite ends of the amplifier. So traditionally the microphone picks up sound and the speaker plays it back, but you can swap them around. It's the same principle, just in reverse. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's talk a little bit about types of microphone and the situations in which they're best used. So the most common type of microphone that you'll find is a dynamic microphone. And a dynamic microphone basically means it's a moving coil microphone, it's physically a speaker. It's the dead opposite 
of a speaker. Uh, there's no electronics in it, it's not powered in any way. It literally picks up the changes in air pressure and then converts it into tiny electrical signals. Now these microphones are great because they're very robust. They're in the case of this, the classic Shure SM58, it's almost indestructible. Anyone who's been to a venue will have seen these with a completely smashed grill, sometimes totally flat at the front. And <clears throat> you pick them up and they still work. They're, they're great, good, solid, reliable microphones. Dynamic microphones sound great on anything that's loud. So drums sound great with dynamic microphones. A vocal close-up can sound great with a dynamic microphone. Guitar amps, dynamic microphone, they sound great. Um, the downsides of these are that they tend to have a fairly low output. So if you're, if you're micing something that's fairly quiet, then you'd be better off with a different type of microphone than a dynamic because these will introduce a certain amount of self noise. And the more you have to turn up the gain to amplify the microphone, the more you'll also increase the noise floor as well. So these are great on louder sources. Again, you could put one of these in front of a trumpet or a saxophone and you'll get a great sound from those. Anything loud, you can use a dynamic microphone. The second most common type of microphone is the condenser microphone or capacitor microphone. Now you might hear um, the words condenser and capacitor used interchangeably and they are interchangeable. Here in Britain we call the little components that are in the microphone capacitors and over in America they call them condensers. They're basically the same thing. So if you're wondering what the difference between a condenser microphone and a capacitor microphone is, there's no difference whatsoever. They are the same thing. Now this is a condenser slash capacitor microphone and this has some electronics in it and those electronics need to be powered. So when you plug this into your mixer or your interface or your preamp, um, you'll notice that it sounds awful and you get hardly any signal out of it at all. And that's because you need to apply what's called phantom power. So phantom power is something that the desk or the interface will send to the microphone. It's 48 volts that will come down the cable and it will power the microphone. And when you apply that, then you'll find you've got a very sensitive microphone that's super quiet, unless it's a really horrible cheap Amazon one or something like that, um, and can be used on a variety of sources. So these tend to be used on quieter instruments, instruments that give a little bit more top end, things like acoustic guitars. Um, these are often used as drum overheads because they pick up the transients of the, the drum and the top end of the cymbals really well. So anything that's a little bit quieter than a a, 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 a spoken voice or a trumpet or something like that, um, you'd quite often go for one of these. However, you can also use these on vocals and they can give a bit more high end than a dynamic microphone. You'll get more level out of the microphone. So if you're working with a fairly quiet singer, you'd be better off using a condenser microphone than a dynamic. Um, you can use these on guitar amps and we've used them all the time. You could also use this on a saxophone. And again, we've done that. Um, but they sound different. These tend to sound a little bit more accurate. They sound a little bit more open than a dynamic and a little bit more natural. So it depends what kind of sound you're going for. Really, if you're, if you're doing recording, if you've got a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone and any kind of decent one, you don't have to spend a fortune. These can be picked up for around about a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars. And again, these, these there's, there's, many options for these that can be picked up for around the same money and these days they are very very good because of advances in machining and just china basically you can get a very good microphone for not a lot of money so these cost around about 100 pounds um, and they're great years ago when i was starting out in the audio industry and i first started off doing home recording you couldn't buy one of these for less than about 1500 pounds um, and it was going to be a, a neumann u87 or, or something like that and 1500 pounds 30 odd years ago was i don't know probably about two and a half thousand pounds today so a condenser microphone was was quite an expensive thing to have in your arsenal if you were a home recordist consequently i had a load of these and it's brother the sm57 um, and i recorded pretty much everything i did with sm58 and it sounded great so you can really use pretty much any microphone on any source um, you could eq this to sound like that um, if you've got too much noise you can use denoising software there's all sorts of things you can do but you're better off trying to get the right kind of microphone for the job 
straight off because then that's less work to do later and you're gonna get a better raw sound to work with. So that's the second type of microphone. Now these are quite often split into two categories. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's first talk about the third type of microphone and that is this one. So this is the third type of microphone most commonly found in studios and this is a ribbon microphone. So a ribbon microphone has a, it's actually got a very thin ribbon in it and the ribbon is used to pick up the sound. Now these sound great on some sources, not so good on others. This particular one sounds absolutely fantastic on horns. If we've got a horn session in the studio, our go-to mic will be this one because it just sounds great. So let's talk a little bit about pickup patterns. Now the pickup pattern is the area in which the microphone is most sensitive. So in the case of the classic Shure SM58, this has got a cardioid pickup pattern, which means if you hold the microphone like that and you draw an upside down heart, hence cardioid, like that, that's the pickup pattern of the microphone. So that means the microphone is most sensitive here and around here and it's least sensitive here. Now, why is that useful? Well, that's useful because if you're recording lots of musicians at once, so here we quite often record a live band all in the room at the same time, you can point this at a guitar amplifier and you can have the drums over there and you're gonna get hardly any drum spill coming into the back of the microphone. The second most common pickup pattern is an omnidirectional pickup pattern. And that means if you've got a microphone such as this, that will pick up sound from 360 degrees around the microphone. So you'll get an equal amount of sound coming in there, as you do coming in there, as you do coming in there, as you do coming in there. It'll pick up sound from all the way around. So these are great if you're doing location recording or something like that, and you, or you need to pick up a lot of room ambience, you're recording a choir or something, and you wanna you know, really get the acoustics of the church coming through, then these are great microphones for that in an omnidirectional pickup pad. These can also be cardioid. This particular one is cardioid. So again, like the SM58, it just picks up sound from the front and the sides and rejects sound coming from the back. Ribbon microphones, most ribbon microphones, just because of their inherent design, will be what's known as figure of eight. So if we hold the microphone like that, we've got the grill there and the grill there. If you draw a figure of eight, that's the pickup pattern you get on this particular microphone. So it will pick up sound from there. It will pick up sound equally from that side. So from the front of the microphone and the back of the microphone, but it will reject sound from the sides. So these were the really the only kind of microphones for early recording. So if you see um, early recordings of Elvis or Frank Sinatra or someone like that, they were often singing into a big RCA ribbon microphone. Um, and you could place the microphone to pick up or reject certain things. So in very early cases where you just had one track recording and you literally had one microphone, you could pick up the vocalist from the front and you could pick up the big band or the orchestra from behind. And that's why a lot of early recordings sound quite mono because they were and they only had one microphone. Similarly, if you watch some videos of Elvis recording in the studio or Chuck Berry or someone like that, um, once they'd got up to two, three, and even four track, wow, imagine that, four tracks, technology, then you'd again have a ribbon microphone on the vocalist. You might have another microphone with a bass player playing upright bass there, and then the drummer would be a bit further back and he'd be playing there. And then you might have another microphone picking up the guitar. So microphone placement, was hugely important back in the day and still is today. It's important to get the right type of microphone for the right job to give you the best results and to think about pickup patterns and placement in the room. Um, a perfect example of that, we recently recorded a jazz quartet in our live room, uh, all live in the room. They were all up one end of the room because we were videoing them and we had this microphone on the saxophone. So what we did is we made sure that the sax was firing into that side we made sure that the drums and the bass, because there was an upright bass player right next to the sax player and then a drummer right next to him, we made sure that the, saxoph uh, sorry, the saxophone was going into the front and that the side of the microphone was pointing at the bass player and the drummer. So that means we got the maximum amount of spill coming into the microphone from the drums and the bass, because the last thing you want when you're doing a live recording is to turn the microphone up that's on the sax and you just get a load of extra drums. Um, through the mic, That's, that makes it really difficult to mix. So microphone placement is hugely important. 
So a couple of other things to take into consideration when you're choosing what type of microphone to use on what job. The first thing to do is to try it all different kinds of microphones on all different kinds of things. So experience is a good thing here. Um, I know if I'm recording a drum kit, I'm gonna go for dynamics as close mics on the drums. I know I'm gonna go for generally a small diaphragm condenser on the overheads of the drum kit. I'm probably gonna put a dynamic in the kick. I'm probably gonna put a large diaphragm condenser outside the kick. And I know that because I've been doing it a lot of years and experience has taught me that different microphones sound better on different things. Experience has also told me that there's no kind of, but a lot of people ask me, what microphone should I get first? And should I get a large diaphragm condenser with a switchable pickup pattern? So a switchable pickup pattern means you can switch it to cardioid, you can switch it to omnidirectional, you could switch it to figure of eight. And the answer is probably not. Your first microphone, I think, should probably be an SM58 because that is the most versatile microphone in the world and you can record pretty much anything with it. If you're a mandolin player and you like to record yourself with the microphone 15 feet away, then an SM58 probably isn't the best choice. But if you can only afford one microphone and you're just starting out, then go for one of these. There's many reasons why you should go for this. And if you can't get a sound, a good sound on pretty much anything with this microphone, then you're doing something wrong. Should you go for an SM58 or an SM57? Well, you should go for an SM58 because if you take an SM58 and you do this, then you end up with an SM57. So you've got two microphones for the price of one. Again, experiment with taking this off. This is great on vocals because it stops a lot of the plosives, which are your p and b sounds coming through. Um, mic up a guitar amp and you take the grill off, you get a slightly brighter sound that tends to cut through a mix more once you've got the grill off because there's quite a bit of foam in there that can take out a few of the high frequencies. So if you're just starting out, I'd go for an SM58 for sure and play around <laughs> for sure, no pun intended, and play around with that. Um, once you start to build up a little collection of microphones, then look at what you're recording, look at where you want to pick up the sound, and try and go with a pickup pattern that is naturally suited to the microphone. So if you want the microphone to pick up sound from 360 degrees, then go for an omnidirectional microphone. If you want a cardioid microphone, but you want the slightly brighter, slightly more sensitive condenser sound, then go for a cardioid large diaphragm condenser. If you want to be able to record two backing singers on one microphone facing each other and you want a figure of eight pack up, uh, figure of eight pick up, pack up, pick up, or you need to do what we did with the saxophone and record the sax, but manage to kind of sort of eject the drums from the side of the microphone, then go for a ribbon microphone that's naturally got a figure of eight pattern. That's generally better than getting a switchable one mic does all because that's always a compromise. You're relying on two capsules that can be switched in and out of phase with each other and things like that. And it does have an effect on the sound. So try and look at what kind of pickup pattern you want and then pick your microphone accordingly. So let's talk briefly about the different types of condenser microphone or capacitor microphone. This is a large diaphragm condenser. This is a small diaphragm condenser. You can probably tell why this has got a much larger diaphragm in it. So the diaphragm, the diaphragm is the bit of the microphone that picks up the sound. In this particular microphone, it's 25 millimeters or a one inch capsule. In this microphone, it's 12 millimeters uh, or a half inch capsule. So the capsule on this microphone is half the size of the capsule on this microphone. Now, when would you use this and when would you use that? Well, you can use this where you'd use that and you can use this where you'd use that, but there's a few things to think about. Now, a lot of people think that because the large diaphragm microphone has a larger diaphragm and a large cone speaker has a larger cone than a smaller cone speaker and is capable of producing more bass, that these microphones produce more bass. That's not true. What is true, however, is that the diaphragm on the small diaphragm condenser, because it's smaller and lighter, that is more responsive to high frequencies. Because high frequencies are packed in in a more narrow bandwidth, they're softer, they don't produce as much energy, you, 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 there's less energy in a high frequency sound than there is in a low frequency sound. These have lighter capsules purely because they're smaller, so they can pick up top end a little bit better 
than the large diaphragm. Um, so, for example, cymbals, the top end sparkle on cymbals can sound much better and more accurate with a small diaphragm condenser. So I'll quite often use a pair of these as drum overheads. If I'm recording an acoustic guitar, I'll quite often put one of these about a third of the way up the neck of the guitar to get the high end and a little bit of sort of pluck and a little bit of attack. And I'll use one of these on the body of the guitar to pick up more of the overall warmth and, and more low end. That's not to say that this won't pick up high frequencies as well as this. It's just that the transients can be better on this because it literally takes less energy to move the diaphragm because it's that much smaller. The downsides are that because this does pick up um, less energy, if you will, if again, if you're micing very quiet sources, your small diaphragm condensers can be quite a bit noisier than your large diaphragm condensers. So if you think noise is going to be a problem, try one of these, try one of those, compare the two and see how it sounds. At the end of the day, there's, there are no rules. The only thing that matters once you've recorded your music and you've mixed your music, the only thing that matters is what you hear back through the speakers. It doesn't really matter how you get there. You can use one of these where you'd use a dynamic, you can use a dynamic where you'd use one of these. If it sounds good, it is good. That's the only real thing to take into consideration. So there's just a very basic overview on the different types of microphone, how they work, and how interchangeable they are with speakers. Don't forget your dynamic microphone, your basic moving coil microphone works in exactly the same way as a speaker and a speaker works in exactly the same way as this microphone. They're just at opposite ends of the amplifier. You can change them around and it'll still work, but be careful if you do that. Don't plug this into anything more powerful than a head headphone output. If you plug this into a speaker output, it's gonna go pop. Um, and if you plug a speaker into a microphone input, you're going to really generally have to shout into it to hear anything come out the other end because a speaker is designed as a speaker and a microphone is designed as a microphone, but they are basically the same thing. I hope that makes sense. Any questions, please leave them in the comments below or send us a message. Please go to our website at presentdayproduction.com uh, to look, view our other videos in a batch. If you've got anything you'd like to know about, please let us know and we'll do our very best to make a video for you. We're also gonna do a frequently asked questions video probably once a week, once the channel gets going. So yeah, if you've got any questions, please let us know and we'll do our very best to answer them in a future video. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go and listen to some music on this SM58.